Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Mobile 12 and for this video I'll be discussing um, the reactions of alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehydes, and ketones. I know there's a lot of information on the board right now, uh, but we'll go through systematically and, and approach it in a very intelligent way of how to do these types of problems. Before we get into it, I do want to give you guys a heads up again about my fan page on Facebook. Um, check it out. Link is in the description box below. Um, definitely check it out. Feel free to post question, questions there. Um, advice, whatever you want to do, suggestions, comments, whatever you want to say. Uh, you can comment on how much you love my channel, how much you enjoy my beautiful and wonderful voice. <laughs> um, do whatever you want to do, um, but within reason. Okay, I don't want to see no R-rated pictures or anything like that on my on the fan page. On the fan page. So, again, link is in the description box. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Well, yeah. Uh, so again, uh, for this video, I'll be discussing the reactions of alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehydes and ketones. Starting, I, I believe I'll be uploading these videos next week. Um, the next set of videos, we're going to deviate away from aldehydes and ketones, and we're going to focus on acid derivatives. So that's going to be the plan, okay? So I think for right now, that's pretty much it as far as any updates or news. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, so for this video again, alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehydes, and ketones. Before we get into the reactions, we need to understand what an alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone looks like. Okay, so what I would do is on this corner of the board right here, make a little line here, I'll draw a structure of what that looks like. So an alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde looks like that. Okay, um, so it's a conjugated system okay it's a conjugated system where you have a you know typical conjugated systems look like this right where you have a double bond single bond double bond well in this case in our case in, in the case of this video it's still a double bond single bond double bond system but instead of being a carbon carbon double bond it's going to be a carbon oxygen double bond okay so the system that we're going to be focusing on is a double bonded a CC double bond, a CC single bond, then a CO double bond. Always identify your system and then work with your reagents and try to identify whether it's going to be a 1, 2 or 1, 4. So again, this is our alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Our alpha beta unsaturated ketone will typically look something like this. Replace the H with a carbon group. So let's be more generic and put R groups there to be more generic. So some type of carbon group some type of carbon group there okay this could very well be in a ring structure okay this is another example I could show you right here um, let me erase this so pause the video after I draw the structure and determine whether or not if this is an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or an aldehyde or even if it isn't or if it's a alpha beta unsaturated anything in the first place so check it out you have this So pause the video and try to determine, is this a alpha, beta, unsaturated system? If it is, is it an aldehyde or ketone? And how do you know? So try to answer those questions. Okay, so pause it, answer those questions, and then unpause it, and then you'll have the answer. So, so in this case, this is an alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone, okay? Because in regards to this carbonyl group, um, there are no H's attached. Um, directly adjacently to the carbon of the carbonyl they're both carbon groups so there's a carbon group there and a carbon group there so this is your alpha beta unsaturated ketone now is it a conjugated system absolutely here's our cc double bond then a c c single bond then a co double bond perfect it's a conjugated system uh, and so there you have it so once you identify your system you want to number it so the way i like to number it Starting off with oxygen, that'll be one. Then the carbon of the carbonyl will be two. Then the alkene itself would be three, four. So you end up with the alkene as being your number four. Okay? That's really important. So let's get into what we have on this board. Okay. 
So here we have, in our first case, we have an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone reacting with Dibol H or the Grignard reagent. Okay, I talked about the Grignard reagent a while ago, okay, probably about two years ago in a video. It was probably one of my first videos. So check that video out if you forgot what the Grignard reagent is. Dibol H, that's a reagent. Just like the Grignard reagent provides a R group as a nucleophile, Dibol H provides a hydride ion as a nucleophile, okay? So um, again, alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehyde, or ketone reacting with one of these reagents, you get a 1-2 addition or a direct addition. It's also known as direct, okay? So here's an example. Here's your alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehyde. How do we know? Well, there's our CC double bond, then a CC single bond, then a CO double bond. So perfect. It's, a, it's the system that we're looking for. We're reacting with Dibol H, so in that case, it's going to be a 1-2 addition, right? So the product we'll have is going to be the direct product. But before we get into drawing the direct product, we need to number our system. And if you recall, just previously, I said the way we want to number our system is starting off with the oxygen. So it'll be one, two, three, four. Okay? So all you have to do, I'm not going to go into the mechanism for this video, um, but all you have to do is get rid of one of these double bonds okay so now you have a carbon and oxygen single bond attach an H to that oxygen where you have now a hydroxyl group and your your hydrogen from that dibol is going to attack that position there it's going to be at that position bond to position number two hence the one two addition so whatever nucleophile you're using whatever reagent you're using that's going to be on position number two so in this case your product will look something like this this hydrogen right here came from that hydrogen right there so that hydrogen is attached to number two and here's your number two position there's your one three four okay very straightforward now we could do the same thing with the Grignard reagent we could have a Grignard reagent where it's the R group that replaces this H over here okay very straightforward and we'll go over some more examples uh, towards the end of this video so again, alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehyde, or ketone with Dibol H or the Grignard, you get 1-2 or direct 1-2 addition, also known as direct addition. Okay? So this is an alternative name for it. Now the second case, you have alpha, beta, unsaturated, aldehyde, or ketone again. I don't know if you can see that K, but that's the ketone. It stands for the ketone. You react it with the Gilman reagent. Now the Gilman reagent is shown below right here in this example. We will talk about exactly what it looks like. Um, then you form the 1-4 or also known as the conjugate product okay reason why is because the 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 group from the reagent will be attached to the fourth position hence the name 1-4 product okay so the Gilman reagent to make a more generic version of the Gilman reagent it will look something like this okay so we put R 2 copper lithium it's an organometallic reagent where you have organic an organic group like the R carbon group and you have a metallic group such as this piece right here, the copper lithium. So again, that's the Gilman reagent, that's the most generic form, the R group. Now in this example below, okay, here we have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Um, it's a conjugated system because we have a carbon carbon double bond then a carbon-carbon single bond, then a carbon-oxygen double bond. So we're perfect in that case. It has to be conjugated in the way I'm explaining it to you right now. If it's not, the reaction will not work the way I'm explaining it to you. It has to be in this type of system where it alternates between carbon-carbon double bond, carbon-carbon single bond, and carbon-oxygen double bond. So now, again, uh, number your system. So one, two, three, four. We start off with the oxygen at position number one. Now, all we have to do in this case is get rid of one of these double bonds here and attach whatever group you have here to position number four hence the name one four or conjugate product one four okay so the product will look like this so let's draw our same starting material the carbonyl is going to is going to remain untouched let's number it like I said 
the alkene becomes an alkane. Okay, let me just let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, the alkene becomes an alkane. So you lose that double bond character and you get a carbon-carbon single bond. And all you have to do is whatever group is inside there, you attach to position number four. So there you have it. I could write it out for you guys too. So there's your conjugate product. So how do you know whether or not to go by the, to draw the 1, 2 or 1, 4 product? Well, it's based off the reagent. First, you have to make sure your system, your starting system is a conjugated in this fashion and it's conjugated where you have a carbon-carbon double bond then a carbon carbon single bond, then a carbon oxygen double bond. Has to be conjugated in that fashion. Now once that's good, then you look at the reagents. Now if it's Dybal or Grignard, then you go to the one two drawing. Okay, you do you draw the one two product. If it's the Gilman reagent, then we go through the one four product. Okay? So now now that I've given you an overview of what the products and how the reaction looks like, let's go over some examples. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Because this is a little tr uh, tricky uh, topic. Um, I'll do two examples and I'll end it at that. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So for example, let's see. Um, let's do this guy right here. Okay. So here we have the starting material. We're reacting it with. Copper lithium, so we're using the Gilman reagent. Oh yeah, and I forgot part of the Grignard, uh, excuse me, part of the the Gilman reagent is H plus uh, workup. If you've seen one of my other videos, I talk about the Gilman reagent um, and I explain the workup. Uh, so I'm not gonna go to the details again of you know what the H plus workup is. It's just it's just it's a neutralization step. Um, so again, first thing first, we need to identify if our starting material. Um, if our starting material is a conjugated system the way that I have described it it has to be a carbon-carbon double bond alternating uh, with a carbon-oxygen double bond so here we have our carbon-carbon double bond then we have a carbon-carbon single bond then a carbon-oxygen double bond perfect a conjugated system has been satisf satisfied that requirement has been satisfied now what we need to do is number our system starting with the oxygen it will be one then the carbon of the carbonyl two, then right here three, then four. We we start with the oxygen, and then we end up with the alkene. Okay. So we look at the reagent. So everything is so far good in regards to the starting material. Now we look at the reagent. Now the reagent is a Gilman reagent, and I told you before I erased this board that a Gilman reagent reacting with this type of system gives you the one four product. So what we, what we can expect is the one four also known as the conjugate product okay the conjugate product okay so all we have to do is attach whatever group is inside this parentheses to position number four and get rid of that carbon carbon double bond and we have a product so let's do that so here's our oxygen double bonded to this system here Plus number one, two, three, four. And what is in our starting material? It's a one, two, three carbon group, okay? It's not a four, that, that's showing the connection between the copper lithium. It's a one, two, three carbon group. So to position number four, we draw a three carbon group hanging off of it. Three carbon chain. One, two, three. And there you have your product. There is your conjugate product. Now, that's pretty much it. And let's do quickly, because I don't want this video to get too long. Let's do the same starting material, but with um, the Grignard reagent, okay? Uh, let's do um, CH3MGBR, H plus workup, okay? The numbering system is perfectly fine. Now, looking at the reagent, 
we see we realize that it's a greener reagent so automatically it has to be the one two addition so we will expect to draw the one two product also known as the direct product so in this case all we have to do is draw the starting material again now in this case we get rid of that carbon oxygen double bond and make it into a carbon oxygen single bond with an H attached to that O so it will look something like this and then to this position here so this is your one two three four remember to position number two okay to position number two all we do now is attach whatever piece is attached to the green reagent so it will be the CH3 and there you have it there is your product in this in this specific example and, there, and that's pretty much it and that covers um, the last tidbits of the alpha beta um, unsaturated aldehydes and ketones and it's, this I think concludes the discussion of aldehydes and ketones in general um, there might be one or two topics left I'll have to check um, but yes this is pretty much it okay so again determine if your conjugated system is set up in the proper way it has to alternate in the way I've been explaining so far number it in the way I've been explaining it and then look at the reagent is it the greener order is it the greener or dibol H if it is it's one two if it's the Gilman it's a one four and then use the basic steps that I showed you to draw that specific product and that's it and I'd like to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned until next time goodbye